Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. I hope I didn't blow out your eardrums. I've been realizing really recently that maybe I've been a little bit too loud. <laughs> because of the red dot meter keeps going up all the way on my mic. There we go. That should be a little bit better for everyone. Uh, but now I wonder if I'm too low. Anyway, uh, uh, this is Shonen Archive. Why don't, you just, why don't you just test record and play it back real quick? Oh shit. All right, everyone, we're back, and it's good. <laughs> it, it works out perfectly fine. What's shown in Archive? It's a series in which me and Zen dedicate our entire lives and well-beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence, starting with Gintama, finished with Jujutsu Kaisen, and going with Kuroko's Basketballs for next week. But today, we're going to be talking about Gintama! Zen, it has been two weeks since the last time. <laughs> It has. Yes, and if you weren't unaware, why wasn't there any um, Shonen Archive last week? Uh, the reason is is that um, we did accidentally gifted the Magi at ourselves. Um, I only had time to watch one of them, and I chose Gintama, and Zen only had time to watch one of them, and he chose Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we... <laughs> classic gift of the magi situation it was we were both very we both laughed it off and played some Yu-Gi-Oh instead <laughs> but finally we're here to talk about gintama i have a um my memory is a little bit fuzzy on this but i should remember a vast majority of these because thankfully i did end up liking a lot of these because i like cats <laughs> zen why don't you go through? We're going to go talk about episodes 190 to 194, starting with 190. Uh, episode 190, uh, I was about to start reading the Japanese title, and I was like, what the hell? Sagashi Mono no, I don't know what this is. When looking for something, try using its perspective. Go ahead, Zen. So, our, our gang is looking for a stray cat that they're trying to find. Mm -hmm. Uh... Gintoki pees on a cat's grave accidentally, and so he gets cursed, and he gets made into a cat. Uh, and it's very funny, because his initial response is not, oh my god, I'm a cat, it's why do I have to be an ugly cat? <laughs> uh, which I thought was very funny. Uh, Gintoki is being chased by like roving cat catchers that are, that are going to neuter all the stray cats, so they stop making more stray cats. Um, he's rescued by the cat that they were looking for. His name is Hoichi. Uh, and then Hoichi attacks him, and they and they fight. And Gintoki notices another cat that's standing on two feet, and he's like, "Oh my god, is that another another cat?" Uh, and it's Katsura, <laughs> uh, who also uh got turned into a cat because he pooped on a cat's grave. Yeah, he went one and step then, further. <laughs> yeah, and then they bump into Kondo. Uh, who is a gorilla, not a cat, because he got bitten by a gorilla. And then <laughs> Kintoki's response is, no, you're the only one who's currently involved in a Spider-Man-esque <laughs> situation. <laughs> so uh, the old lady who's helping the cats um, betrays them to the cat catchers to get them neutered. Um, and then Hoichi's like, all right, Come with me. I gotta teach you how to live. And um it's like you go up to people and beg them by pretending to be super cute and all. They realize that won't work in condo because he, he's oh, because he's a giant <laughs> he's gorilla. A fucking gorilla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh they bump into Ty and Kube, and Ty actually finds him cute for the first time ever. Um <laughs> And then uh, they see Okita, who's like, oh, look, here, you can have this sausage thing. Uh, but then he eats it in front of them and then slowly takes out his cell phone and takes a picture of them <laughs> and then leaves. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Um, and then Hijikata, I think, uh, gives them mayo for them. And then uh, Hoichi's like, all right, I'm going to take us to my, to my good spot. Uh, my, my good... Uh, locale for food and it ends up being Atose's place is where they go for, for food and they have like a little a little moment with Atose. Mm. Yeah. That's... I think they I think one of the, I think is this when Shinpachi makes the joke saying if you're going to uh 
if you're going to start with like the the human member removement plan, can you please wait for me to use mine? Yes. Because <laughs> is like, we should neuter people instead. Yeah, that is. He, he does say, I, I want to use mine at least first. <laughs> yeah, this is episode. Uh, from what I can remember, what I liked, I this is for some reason, I don't know, maybe somewhere deep down inside me, I think Kondo's actually true form is him in this gorilla form. I th I think this is <laughs> where he gets the most mileage out of finally being his true self. Uh, I think he he has not made me as laugh as much as when he was in this fucking gorilla form. <laughs> Mainly because they treat him so much nicer than they do when they treat him in human form. <laughs> um, like that, the the part where he's with Tai and uh, Kube, and they're <laughs> and they're doing this bit where fucking oh, it's so funny. Where Kube is like, oh, um, I have like a full on block of meat on me. And we're like, we want the block of meat. She's like, no, you can't just give him the block of meat. He's like, don't listen to her. Just give us the giant damn block of salami or whatever. And she ends up um, holding on to it. He's like, okay, I won't give it to him because she says it. And then Tay gives him her, like, disgusting food. And there's a moment where Kyubei comes back and it looks like she's going to give him the uh, the giant sli the slice of salami. And instead what she does is she picks up Tay's food and eats it. <laughs> <laughs> and she does it in such a fucking funny way where she like goes like I'm sorry and then she like quickly eats it and turns around and just runs away and we learn that she's just been eating all of her food this entire time <laughs> it's really funny the the bit with Okita is super funny because it looks they're like okay we're on to you we're it's obvious that you're gonna just dangle it in front of us and you're not actually gonna feed it feed us and then they didn't. They end up falling for it, and it's pretty funny. But it's even funnier when they go to Hijikata, and he's doing the exact same bit, but it's with Mayo. And they're like, nobody wants your disgusting-ass Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> and he treats it so much like, oh, I'm getting... He's like, he has that same smug look as Okita does. When Okita's like, mmm, and he's eating it, he's doing it with the Mayo, and they're just like, oh, you're so disgusting. <laughs> nobody wants your gross-ass food. And then at the end, he's like, you know what? I know what you need. And he just, like, dumps the full-ass Mayo bottle, and he goes like, huh for you guys and he leaves <laughs> it's so funny the way he does it it's so good the way he's like yeah i really helped out those and you know i was playing with you guys i got the goods for you here you go <laughs> the mayo that you want and yeah the the bit with atose at the end is very nice very well done i like the when the cat katsura first shows up because when he does it doesn't sound like katsura it has like a deep voice and then it reveals it's Katsura and his voice changes back to regular uh -huh. Katsura. <laughs> which is very good. I like the back and forth he has with like Intoki where he's like, oh yes, we defiled that grave. Like I, I may have opened up and put number two in. It's like, oh, well, you did something way worse than I did. You disturbed those spirits more than I did. Why am I getting punished as hard as you? <laughs> Mine was a simple mistake. You did it on a real pur for a real purpose. Yeah, in general, I, I thought it was a very nice start of it. I like the this ornery black cat that the, not black cat this ornery cat that they have right now. Um, I like the way that when he starts fighting Gintoki, he the, the reason he says like the reason he saved him is that because when the cats lose their balls, they lose their ability to fight, and I want to fight you at your full power, basically. And this cat is also crazy OP based off of every these upcoming episodes. By the way, <laughs> this cat is insanely strong. Like, they give him, like, giant hero moments, but it's a cat, and it kind of works for me. So I really like this episode. Uh, how do you feel, Zan? Uh, it was good. It was, you know, it's one of those ones where it's, like, the first episode of where it's going to end up being, like, a sort of deep arc. It's gonna There's going to be emotions in it, but it has to start off extensively silly. Yes. Uh, and this is extensively silly. It doesn't start as hard as the dog one, though. When the dog one starts off immediately of, like, ten minutes of pure, like, man, this dog just doesn't have a lot left to it, and then it fucking flips the switch on you, it's not that intense of the of the screen flip, I'd say. But still, yeah, you can tell that it's it's going in that direction from the get-go, <laughs> the second you see that there is a cat involved and he's old. And Atose is involved in as well, which I feel like they also like to use Atose for those moments. And now, whenever they do use her, either she's yelling at them... 
at, at Gintoki, or she's involved in some kind of heartfelt moment, I feel like. That's yeah. true, yeah, that's basically her role. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's episode 190. And let's move on to episode 191. Freedom means to live true to yourself, not without law. Go ahead, Zen. So they hang out with Hoichi, and we learn that the people are uh, catching the cats because they're actually giving them to cat aliens to rescue their, their cat planet. Uh, and Shinpachi and Kagura are like, it's always phrased, it's it's not exactly like this, but it, it keeps reminding me of like, uh, you know, like noir detective, where they're like in their office and talk, because they're always in Atose's in like low lighting, and they're like, <laughs> this is what's going on, we're looking into it, and then it, they just don't show up again for the rest <laughs> of the episode. Um, it's true. Gintoki is trying to learn how to hunt, and he sucks at it. Um, and he can't do it. And then uh, he's the only one that sucks because Katsura and also Kondo, who is a gorilla, uh, <laughs> had no problem hunting the sparrows. Um, Gintoki and Hoichi talk at night because Gintoki is obviously um, like trying to figure out how to become a human again. And he's like, you got to give it up, man. Um, and Gintoki's like, why? And he's like, because I was also a human. Um, 13 years ago, I became a cat because I took a cat in um, and I didn't want to kill people. He was like a Yakuza assassin. And he was like, all I did was was kill people. Uh, and now I, I want to protect that cat. Um, but then he was he was fighting and the cat got killed. And when he woke up, he was like, his soul was in the cat's body. And so he just started protecting all the stray cats by beating them up and like like asserting himself as the alpha cat, so that they would listen to him and he could keep them out of trouble. Uh, but they eventually decided that like, like they wanted to be free, so they teamed up uh, and started attacking him. And he was like, "I'm passing my torch on to you all. You're the new boss cats." And kind of like, "I'm a gorilla. I can't be a boss cat." <laughs> um, and then suddenly the cat catchers show up and all the strays are like, oh no, we drew their attention. Oh, shit. Um, and so they all get grabbed. Uh, Hoichi tries to save them, uh, but he gets caught by the cat catchers. And then um, we cut back to the, the gang with Atose again, and they're like, we really want to really save the cats, but, but we don't know. And while they're talking, uh, Gintoki, Katsura, and Kondo are like, we're going to go bust them out. Uh, and so they're like on top of a wall, and it's two cats and a gorilla. It's so. And they're cool. like, all right, where they they give like this speech where Katsura, I, I forget the exact line, but it was great. He's like, unfortunately for for Hoichi, I don't intend to live or die as a cat. I intend to live and die as a samurai. <laughs> uh, and this so one... they leap off the wall to go rescue him after their big. It's like the big Gintama heroic speech, it, it, but then yeah. they land on a pitfall trap. <laughs> they get caught immediately. Um, they end up in a cage inside, and Gintoki's like, well, that was obviously the plan. Um, that was the goal here. And uh, they, they decide that the only way to get them out is to kick Katsura out of the cage, because he's the smallest cat. And then he can go get the keys. Um... He doesn't quite fit, so they're like hitting him to like knock him out. And at one point, uh, Gintoki just says, "Just pretend you're Tom from Tom and Jerry." <laughs> uh, and they they kick him out of the cage finally, and then he ends up uh, ripping off Gintoki's tail accidentally. Um, and he, he uses his tail as like a lightsaber and cuts the cage open with it. And Gintoki's like, "How is that working?" <laughs> uh, Gintoki then takes his tail back from Katsura, so Katsura grabs his own tail and pulls it out like a like a sword, and Kondo does the same thing with his dick. <laughs> and they just start beating up the guards, and then they're like, Gintoki, you gotta go save the boss! And that's where it ends. Yeah, the man, this episode is everything I think I love about Ginto about Gintama in a single episode. So obviously they have a very not the the backstory of Hoichi Hoichi 
where he talks about specifically about uh, his life as working as the Yakuza type dude, killing and killing and killing and not really seeing a point to life until he actually has something that he wants to protect. And then he's willing to die for that because he knows that his bosses are going to kill him because he's no longer useful for what he was supposed to do, which is all that he was ever supposed to be, which is supposed to be a killer. But now he's a killer who's lost his edge. So there's no point to keep him around anymore. And the fact that the cat kind of gives up his life to protect him in a way that the same way that he wanted to protect him. It's all very good stuff. It's all fantastic. And I also like that when he's giving this backstory... I think prior to before this or just after this, Gintoki says, you really are final form Frieza. Uh-huh. <laughs> because without his ears, he looks a lot like final form Frieza. <laughs> oh, man. It, it was... It's a really good moment, and it gets brought up a little bit more in the next episode as uh, more stuff goes on, but I really like that moment. That big hero moment they have is so stupidly well done. When they're talking about, like, oh, yeah, to live... I don't plan to live and die as a cat. I want to live and die as a samurai. And it's amazing because when they're doing, when they're up on the wall, there's the two cats and the, the gorilla who's hanging on on a ledge. And then when they do the, the, when they do the full shot, they transition back into their human poses. But Kondo is still hanging on to the pole. <laughs> Even yeah. it is. Oh, so good. So good. And of course, that moment gets immediately cut out from when uh when they jump down the bit here about the cattails are actually lightsabers and the way that he just immediately goes with it and they start like they start just like fucking fighting with their tails is really good and then Kondo just whips out his dick and starts <laughs> smacking people with it and it's like a giant sensor bar as well which is amazing uh really good stuff uh really liked the talk that they had where they're um, where they're looking at the moon, I thought it was really well done. When they go to capture the cat, it's also really well done because they have him by like <laughs> they get him by all four of his paws, and he's like stuck in the middle. It comes off as like an ultimate like badass move, but <laughs> it just makes it funny because it's a it's a cat. Um, I also like the moment when all the cats are betraying him and they're going after him, and even though they've betrayed him, he's still trying to help them. Uh, and this comes back into the next episode. It's uh, really good. I really like this one. I also like when I think they're, I think it's in this one, or it might be the beginning of this one, when Shinpachi and Kagura realize the reason that they can't go over there is because basically the dudes who are taking them have diplomatic immunity. So they can't actually talk, they can't actually reach there. But Tosei's like, don't worry, I think we kind of got it. And I think it's implied that Tosei might know that the Gintoki cat is actually Gintoki. Yeah, because she says something like, Gintoki hasn't come back yet, right? And they're like, no. Uh... Yeah, she's, she's like implying that. But also when the the Gintoki cat is leaving, she says to him, hey, watch, uh, watch out for him for me, will you? And it really heavily implies that she's she kind of knows that he's currently a cat and just isn't saying it. I don't know if it's just me reading into it, or maybe she just has crazy old lady powers that makes her see when someone's been turned into a cat. I don't know. But either way, I thought it was very well done. And in general, I really like this episode. It is great. And like I said, I like this arc, and I like where it ends going, and I want to talk about it more but in the next one, but that's what I liked about this episode. How do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it was good. I thought the ending was funny. I liked the lightsaber tale. <laughs> um, I thought it was extremely funny when... Uh... He gives it back to Gintoki, and it just flops back to a normal tail. <laughs> and so he just rips his own off. Um, That's very good. And uh, I, the next one's much better than the other two, yeah. but this one was funny, too. It's, it's a really good ending of it. That's why I want to uh, move on and talk about it. So let's do that, shall we? Episode 192, uh, Kakabucho Stray Cat Blues. So Gintoki rushes off um, to try to save the the king at the end of the last or the, the king, to save uh, Hoichi mm-hmm. at the end of the last episode. Uh, the king of Catamontos. Yeah. Well, the king of Catamontos shows up and he's like, um, "I need I need a, an heir for my kingdom, um, but to do that I need your balls because my my dick doesn't work. I need to summon Shenlong." <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a huge Dragon Ball parody where he's like, if you have the golden balls, you can make Shenlong stand yeah, tall again. The seven gold, which is really funny because at the beginning of the episode, he's like, why does someone need cat balls? Are they going to summon Shenron? It's like, no, don't be <laughs> stupid. And then it turns out two episodes later that is in fact what their plan is. <laughs> <laughs> um... So then he puts them into an arena and he lets a monster loose on them because he's like, aha, that's the that that's the way to get your you to like reveal if you have the golden balls or whatever. Because when you're afraid for your life, that's when you're the most like light full of life or whatever. Mm. Um, Hoichi attacks it and he's like fighting it off, uh, but he's he's too little because he's a, he's a little cat. Um, and then the monster shoots like uh, debris at all the other cats, and Hoichi jumps in the way and takes the hit. And he flops down, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I couldn't save you all. I'm, I I died." Um, and you get a little flashback of him like protecting this little cat from some dogs, and that's how he got his ears like destroyed. It's because they they hurt him really bad. Um, but then the wall cracks open right as the monster is about to finish him off, and Gintoki appears and kicks it in the face. Um, and then he yells to all the other stray cats, like, "Oh, it's time to it's time to be free and live the life the way that you want to live it. No more is there a boss cat. And so, what do you want to do?" And they they all like jump the monster together. It's like a horse. I think they even say, "Oh my God, the strays are uniting." <laughs> <laughs> um, and all the stray cats join together to take down the monster and they cheer when they finally kill it um, and then I guess that was good enough to to break the curse because after Gintoki kind of gives him like a pep talk and he's like do you think that um, you weren't cursed by your cat friend and really he just wanted you to live free instead of uh, being bound to the shitty life that you were living uh, so he wanted you to live like a proper stray, and he's like, "Thanks, man." And then he goes, he says, he goes to say that he wants to be uh, Gintoki's friend, but as he looks, Gintoki's gone. Uh, and then him and Katsura are in the cat grave that they mm -hmm. like pooped and peed on. Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> the Shinsengumi finds them, and Katsura explodes out of the grave, <laughs> doing that laugh that he does, <laughs> <laughs> and he just starts running. Um, eventually Gintoki gets out and because Katsuri had told him like if you see if you see Hoichi say hi for me and Gintoki is like he wouldn't even recognize us anymore because we're not cats uh, and then him and Hoichi walk past each other on the street while it's playing the, the Gintama song yeah, mm -hmm. the one they do during emotional endings um, and it's a, a funny like I guess it's not funny, but it's uh, a little funny in the moment where they walk past each other, and you get like a frame where it goes black and white, and they switch, and it's Gintoki in cat form, and Hoichi in his old human body, like as they pass each other before it cuts back to Gintoki and, and Hoichi in their proper bodies. Um, and then it turns out that Hoichi had peed the phrase, thanks pal, on the wall because he did recognize Gintoki, and Gintoki gives him a little wave uh, over the shoulder as they leave, and. Uh, it's like it like does the thing that I don't know what I don't know what the name of it is, but where it becomes like extra detail on like a freeze frame. Yeah, it's like a extra freeze. It's like the end of Rocky Two montage where he goes ding ding, and like they go to like a freeze frame punching each other, and it's like super detailed in that. It's kind of like that, but in anime form where it's just a super detailed drawing of Gintoki waving and the cat being very pleased with himself. And yeah, that's the end of this arc. Uh, man, I really liked a lot of this. Uh, first of all, I want to say I fucking laughed when uh, Kondo shows up in at the end because he's the one. Because uh, how does the Shin Shinshin and Gumi know that they were there? Kondo told them. And you think that Kondo's returned back to human form, but he's actually still a gorilla and everyone just treats him normally. <laughs> and he goes like, ooh, ooh. He's like, all right, Kondo. <laughs> and they just go off. And that's how they treat Kondo at the end. <laughs> really funny he never because he the um he was never cursed obviously so there was, that was no way for him to see he's just still bitten by the radioactive monk gorilla i don't think it was even radioactive it was just a gorilla so i like that part of it um i like that gintoki gets another hero entrance but this time as a cat and it's a really good one uh when he fucking just punches the shit out of that uh monster that they're fighting um 
the summon Shenron was also really good because they call Shenron Shenlong instead. And also the king of the Catamontos is like talking. He's like, I know the old language. And he's just going, meow, 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 meow. And it's just like, uh, at the bottom, it's like super long, like sentences worth. And he's just going like, meow. It's very, very, very funny to me. And, um, the monster fight between, um, uh, Hoichi and the monster itself, I thought was actually really well done, like really nicely animated. He's, he's like doing, um, a sonic spin ball at one point on the monster's like, uh, arm as he's like going to go fight it. It's really <laughs> for, it, it doesn't last very long, but it's actually a very well done fight as they're fighting each other. Um, I liked it when Kentucky reveals to the cats, like, hey, now there's no bosses. What do you want to do? You want to save a friend? And they choose this to help him out after they realize, like, hey, we've been acting maybe like a little bunch of asshole cats. <laughs> and he actually is our friend, so let's go save him. Um, I really liked the moment where... when There's a moment where when Atose has... After he's healing up Hoichi after he loses his arms, where she compares him to another sp stray she picked up, and she's talking about, obviously, Gintoki. Um, and there is some similarities about Gintoki and Hoichi, them being two dudes who were all about killing and then later found something that they were willing to protect. The only difference is that Hoichi was unable to protect the thing that um, he loved most and the thing that protected him. The thing that he wanted to protect actually ended up protecting him and wanted him to live a specific life. It ended up being, I think, a really nice kind of layout. It's never, like, outright said, like, hey, this is the kind of things that you need to look for. But it's kind of, like, in the background as a cool kind of uh, look at specifically of Gintoki's character, which is really cool. And yeah, in general, I really like the ending moment of this where you said where it's, like, it's funny and it's also really nicely heartfelt. Um... I don't think there's anything better than saying, like, to describe Gintama than a cat pisses out, hey, thanks, pal, and it's a loving moment <laughs> between two friendships. Yeah, it's just so funny, because, like, you're watching it, and, like, it was it was emotional. I was like, damn, this is great. And, like, yeah. you know, they, like, walked away, and then I was like, wait a minute, this entire arc was about cats getting their balls cut off. Yes, but <laughs> the, <laughs> it, it, is a, it is a thing of beauty where the main thing here they say at the beginning of the first arc is that's really stupid it would never be that and then it totally is that <laughs> they really were collecting seven golden cat balls to summon Shenron <laughs> and it's still there was this moment there I was just like damn like especially when it looked like Hoichi might be especially with the track record we have for characters that are introduced in arcs I was feeling a little bit I was like please don't kill this cat you I already lost the dog don't take this cat from me as well <laughs> But thankfully, when Gintoki comes in and saves him, and he tells him like the the lesson here is that you did not have to die for your friends. It's okay to just live for your friends, and that's good enough too. It's very nice, and it's a very like nice message to put in this. And it's a very silly arc where just literally two like they're giving off this very beautiful message, and not like thirty minutes ago, a gorilla whipped out his dick and started beating dudes with it. It is. Yep beautiful <laughs> it is art at its finest <laughs> so i really like this episode i thought it was a great ending to this like mini three episode arc how did you feel zen uh it was really good i really liked it it was way too cute for what it was mm -hmm. um but like i don't know it's weird because you just kind of get to that point and you're like huh i i am feeling real emotions even though this is objectively incredibly stupid and that's just what a what a what a Gintama thing to be. Yeah, it is. Especially when we're this many episodes deep. I think we're just understanding of it <laughs> and we go, yeah. It's a it's a it's a magical thing for sure. That is episode 192. Let's go on to the last two episodes which are one-offs, which is episode 190. Oh god, good luck with this one, Zen. Uh <laughs> Cooking is about guts, episode one ninety three. Explain this one. Yeah, I only made it like halfway through this one before I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just read the subtitles here and there. Uh, it's okay. really it's so. 
they're they're eating eggs on rice and Cogger's like, I really like eggs on rice. And Kentucky's like, we eat too much eggs on rice. I had a nightmare that we were getting attacked by eggs on rice. Um and they I, I want something different. And so they take Kagura to like Ote, who's like, Yeah, you know, you gotta have other things other than eggs on rice, like omelets. And Shimbashi's like, those are still eggs. <laughs> And then uh, they say something like, "You're when you get a husband, he's not going to want eggs on rice every day. And she's like, well, I'll just marry Colonel Sanders. And then he's like, no, because the colonel doesn't eat fried chicken every day. <laughs> um, so they decide to go to a cooking class. Because uh, he's like, oh, why don't you come and learn how to cook with me? And so they go. And then Kube is also there. And Kube is like, I, uh, I came here because you told me to, but I can't. I can't attend a cooking class because men don't step in the kitchen. And then Tay's like, "Well, you're gonna you're gonna be a bride one day." And Kiwi's like, "No, I'm not. I'm gonna marry either you or Ronald McDonald." <laughs> because they're gender neutral, which is maybe because, the- yeah, because their gender is unclear. That might actually be the funniest joke in this entire episode. Because <laughs> I had to actually go like, it, it. I had to pause it and go like, "Is Ronald McDonald gender?" I feel like the name Ronald is is pretty male coded, but I don't know. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Live your life, Cube. <laughs> Go for it. Because your... their because their gender is unclear, and I could have French fries every day. Pretty good reason. Um. Uh. Then Sachan is also there because she wants to learn how to cook to impress Gintoki. Um. The teacher shows up, and she's like, "Cooking is is love." And then they're all like, "Oh, hey." Isn't that um, the the chef whose like husband divorced her and ran off for someone else? And they're like, "Wow, this what a pathetic person <laughs> can't cook for real love." Or so, so they like rip into this woman they because do. she got divorced. Um, and then they're trying to pick a team name, and I had to Google the guy, but apparently they they decide on like a Japanese comedian to be the team name um, because they keep they keep throwing stuff around, and I don't remember what. Sachan's exactly was, but it was something anus. Yeah, um, it was. This is where, unfortunately, the episode loses both of us because they get really it's heavy a lot into of Japanese Jap- references. Yeah, so I don't because when you were reminding me, it's like the beginning of this episode. I remember really liking. Where did this episode lose me? Oh yeah, it's when the part where it was nonstop Japanese references yeah, for just the next constant Japanese like pop culture references. Um, yeah, but there was one joke in it that I thought was really fucking funny. And it was when um, they were arguing over the thing, and they decide to do the the anus one, and Kyuhei is like, I'll do whatever uh, Ote says, so we'll do this guy's butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and I just fucking laughed my ass off for a minute there. Just the way Kyuhei says it is like, yeah, we'll, we'll do this guy's butthole. Um, was really fucking funny. Um, and then the the thing ends, and it ends up being like a cooking show, and they get like wheeled out. And then the band that uh, there's like some Japanese comedy band was like what their thing was about. It was like their team name. And then that band is playing on the show as the thing is like removed. I don't know, man. Um, and then there's a bit at the end where Gintoki's like, "Hey, look at the um, we have we have a movie coming out. Look at this movie, and the ticket is like a shirtless Kentucky and Hijikata like laying on each other. <laughs> and then uh, I'm pretty sure the trailer for the movie is the Benny Zakura arc again. It is, and it's called something like Benny Zakura the Final or something like that. Yeah, and then they start mentioning if you pay attention to every single one of the episode titles, they had been counting down to this to the grand finale of Gintama. That's crazy. Yeah, which maybe, again, explains, because we saw the Christmas episode out of order, why that actually legitimately felt like the ending of it. Because now it really does feel like, I'm not sure how much these dudes are fucking around anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this episode. Uh, some Funny enough, the things you mentioned that were funny made me fucking laugh, to be honest. Yeah, the, the stuff that was funny was really funny, but the yeah. stuff that was, like... Lost in translation, like there's just yeah, no... it was just yeah, it's it's not for someone who doesn't know Japanese pop culture. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's just like yeah, I think it's really funny when they started talking about like yeah, gender neutral Ronald McDonald, my my bride to be. That's great stuff. Let's get into this guy's butthole. Great stuff. Where they lose you is when it's like oh yeah, let's just go straight into ten minutes of 
super nitty gritty details of Japanese pop stars. And I'm sure if you are actually from Japan, it was pretty funny. But it just comes. This must be how it feels like to be a Dragon Ball to uh, to be a non Dragon Ball fan and have to deal with the Dragon Ball jokes. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, because it, it just completely lost me on that. But again, the things you mentioned, I thought were really good, and I did like the opening beginning bits where they talk about Colonel Sanders and stuff like that. But you know, it's all right. the The things you mentioned were funny, were funny enough, and I'm just gonna have to understand that not every the Japanese show will sometimes just feature jokes that are not 100 percent for me, and it's okay. Yeah, they're just not all for me. But there's nothing I can do about it, really. Yeah. You know, just enjoy what you can and move on. It was a very good, easy episode to kind of just have in the background and go like, yeah, okay. They're really talking about this a whole bunch, aren't they? <laughs> They're really passionate about this. Um, and yeah, I really did like the ending bit of the continuing joke of the Benny Zakura stuff. It makes it all the more funnier now that we've already seen the movie. <laughs> we had no idea that they were going to be hyping it up for this long. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea. How much the, it was a running joke. I honestly joke. thought at first that it was a joke, that they were like, Benny Zakura, the final time. <laughs> it's like, because they do it so much. Yeah, they do. It's really funny. It, 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 I can understand now why so many people were like, it's actually okay to stop. You'll know when it's coming out. Because, <laughs> yeah, they make it very clear when this movie's coming out. I also like the continuation of them trying to sell Gintama by appealing to... Uh, People who are super into boy love type stuff. It's very uh -huh. funny. The, yeah, the ticket being Hijikata and Gintoki was really funny. This is really good. Yeah, but that's episode 193. Let's move on to episode 194. Whenever I hear Leviathan, I think of Suzasan, stupid me. So this is a... um. It's not actually a 1A, 1B episode, but it feels like it. Um, I don't even really know what was going on in the beginning. It was oh, like yeah. Kamui, yeah, Kamui's it, brother. It's based off of a, a, a TV show from Japan. Okay, well, I'll, again, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I think he like, the... transfers to a new school, and their dad is the teacher. And like his old underlings from the arc that he was in are like delinquent bullies at the school. Um. Mm. And then he's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. Whoever, someone who gets it, more power to you. <laughs> For, please uh, feel free to actual... explain it so I like, so I can at least understand it. It'd be good to, because <laughs> I was also just like very confused. It, it has to be. It, so the show that it's based off of is called Bebop High School. I assume it's similar to like someone making fun of maybe nine hundred two one zero. Uh, oh, okay, maybe because they kept cutting back to his face, and then it kept saying "Bebop" like on yeah, his face. Yeah, it did. So it it must uh, be. Yes, to okay, his face. okay. So that makes some sense. Yeah. Um, as we try and workshop, for it makes trying. some sense. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but it makes some sense. Probably makes a lot more um, sense if you are familiar with the show. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's probably way easier to understand if you know what that show is. Mm -hmm. Um. But then we cut into the actual arc where they are going to raid, um, like the Shinsengumi is going to raid like a big meeting of the anti-foreigner faction or whatever the fuck they're called, um, and they're like marching down the street and like it's, it's like it looks like a Star Wars platoon of stormtroopers, um, and then Kondo gets up and out of the car and he's like, "All right, Squad A, you're with me. Squad B, we're over here, like doing all this stuff," uh, and they get inside of the thing, and um, Hijikata notices that there's a big thing of snot dripping off of Kondo's nose. And he's like, oh god. <laughs> if he goes in there looking like this, they're all gonna make fun of him, because look at him. Um, and then uh, he, like, keeps trying different things to figure out how to, like, uh, get the snot off of his nose and he's like i gotta like go wash your face and he does and comes back and it's like even longer down his face he's like what the fuck is going on um and he calls it i think he calls it tarzan he and does like um because it goes too long and he's like oh it's gonna break and then it shows like a picture of kondo dressed as tarzan like falling down a cavern into a ravine <laughs> um and then uh, they're like, okay, so we got another, we got another plan. Um, and he goes to like try to make him sneeze it out, and there, you know, he like tries to blow on it to blow it away. 
And then Kondo sneezes and there's even more. And he's like, fuck. Um, so he starts like saying, fuck it. I'm just going to grab it with my hands. And he's like trying to grab it and it keeps moving out of the way every time he tries to get it. Um, and then, uh, so the, the anti-foreigner faction hears them and runs in and he's like, what's going on with all that snot? But before you can get the word snot out, he kind of kicks him through a wall <laughs> and he just starts killing them all every time they go to mention Kondo's snot. And he keeps saying words that start with S to like distract it. So Autumn's like, "What's up with all that?" And he's like, "Soul Society." <laughs> <laughs> and then for the third one, he yells, "Son Goku!" <laughs> uh, and he just keeps killing them all. Um, and then they're like, "Okay, here we have a we have a like a handkerchief," and he goes to to like wipe his eyes with it and then the handkerchief grabs the or the snot grabs the handkerchief and starts wiping his face and he's like how is this happening um yamazaki also walks in and is like uh kondo what's going on with the snot but before you can get the word out it shows hijikata and his eyes like glow red and he grabs it and chucks it like a vase and chucks it at him and it smashes over his face and like knocks him unconscious and then it's really funny afterward because he runs up and he goes Oh no, Yamazaki, are you okay? <laughs> uh, and then it turns out that the snot uh, falls out and is like, um, oh, I'm the true form of Kondo, and I infected a gorilla on Earth and made myself look more human so that I could do an investigation. Um, and then... Uh, my my destiny after my investigation was to be blown into a tissue and I always wanted to be blown into a tissue by you, Hichikata, because we've been here for so long and I, I really had fun with you guys and I didn't want it to end. And then Hichikata, I forget what Hichikata does but he's like, ooh, that was gross. And then he gets attacked by the snot which then like zips his pants up and they're like, hey, your fly's been down. <laughs> and then it ends up going up his nose and then it turns out that he's having a nightmare and he's like, Kondo, there's snot on your nose in the car and the episode ends yeah and Gondo just goes oh is there and he just like wipes it off <laughs> off screen yeah <clears throat> so yeah this episode uh I did the, the, the weird opening bit with the Bebop Kumoi the one thing that I really liked about it is that the his underling plays every single side character <laughs> Like, there, there's the one that is clearly based off of the other guy with Kamoi, but the one who died in the arc, he plays every single side character in the weird little short things that they do. <laughs> I did not even notice that. That's he, amazing. He does, including, so at the ending, when he, he plays, uh, when he's in the hospital, that dude comes back as his mom, and he goes like, I really need to get him the transfer out. Like, they do the, the same joke that they've been doing for all of them, so I thought that was pretty funny. That was the only thing I really understood was that bit, otherwise, a reference that I didn't fully understand. And the episode itself, I remember feeling, this feels like a really weird fucking episode. And when it revealed that it was a dream, I was like, that makes a lot of sense, because it did feel kind of like a nightmare the more you saw it. Like, it was borderline breaking when the snot actually started to, like, grow hands and started to wipe himself. <laughs> that was the part I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> you... Yeah, it, it started it started going south, that's for sure. Yeah, and then it, by the end, it makes sense. I like the bit at the end where he's just, like, very cautiously after he wakes up from his nightmare and sees the snot, he's like... Hey, you got some. And he goes, oh, okay. And he, like, cleans it up. <laughs> but yeah, that bit where he's attacking everyone is really funny. When he says Soul Society and Son Goku. <laughs> and yeah, that attack on Yamazaki was really funny. Where he's like, who could have done this to Yamazaki? <laughs> and then I think Kato says something. He's like, we'll avenge you, Yamazaki. <laughs> Which is really good. Um, but yeah, you know, I thought it was all right. I enjoyed my, uh, I enjoyed the snot stuff more than I enjoyed the beginning bit of it, but I ended up being like, all right, by the end of it, good enough stuff, decent enough. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was good. I thought the, the joke of Hijikata trying to prevent the snot from being seen was definitely the funniest part of the episode. Yeah. Um, I didn't get the beginning bit, really. Um, I did think the part where he was like, I, I went into a gorilla's body and made him and, and made him look as human as I could. And then it like zooms on Kondo's face. It was pretty funny too. <laughs> um, 
Oh, and it was, I, it was all right. Yeah, I was like the bit where Hijikata says, "Everyone go to the bathroom," and all the Shins and Gumi are just like, "Kondo, uh, not not Kondo, Hijikata, we we already went." It's like you don't understand. There's a big raid coming up, and we're not going to be able to turn back when we hit start hitting the anti foreigners. So everyone should go use the bathroom. But everyone was clearly like, "Hey, man, I know we're the Shinsen Gumi and we're a silly group, but come on, we're all we're all here for a very serious reason." It was really funny. It's like the first time I've ever seen every single Shinsen Gumi uh, member united in the idea of like, "Okay, no silly stuff." We're we're here for serious business. Where we have to attack these anti foreigners. So I thought that was pretty funny, especially because after Hiji, uh, after Kondo leaves the bathroom to wash his face, it comes back even bigger. <laughs> the snot did not go down in any length. So yeah, that was episode one ninety four, and that is it for Gintama this week. Uh, next week, hopefully. We'll be able to finally finish off this season with the Diviner arc, which is going to be episodes 195, 196, 197, 198, and 199. And that will be it for what is ostensibly what some people would consider the end of season one slash the fourth season of Gintama. Because we will have at that point seen 201 episodes, and we will then get to finally talk about the really weird Yoriniku Gintama-san, Gintama-san episode stuff, which is just going to be a bunch of new OPs and EDs that they made specifically for these episodes. Uh, and then we'll be able to go into Gintama in Inkin Chosen, which is basically Gintama Overtime, uh, which is like Gintama with the little... The little I forget what that's called. Do you know what that is? The little thing at the end? Like you can barely see it on the on the on the cover of it, but it's like a I cannot believe I'm forgetting. Oh, I have no it. idea. I'm gonna show you it in a Discord, and you're gonna be like, "Yeah, that thing. This thing. You know what that thing is? Uh, I've, apostrophe. Is it? It is an apostrophe. Yes, it is Gintama apostrophe. Um. And yeah, we'll be able to go into that one, and then we are going to be, we're getting dangerously and dangerously more close to being almost done with Gintama. We still have, obviously, a bunch of other stuff to go through, and we have some other stuff that we've discussed off screen, but uh, in terms of episode counts, we are going to hit more than the halfway point. We are past the halfway point at this point, and we're barreling toward the ending, Zen. Isn't it exciting? One of these days. We're one of the, I'm going to say right now, by 2024, this is all going to be done. Because by uh, the next one, they're going to be start to be grouped in much bigger episodes. So, like, entire big arcs will be able to be done in a single episode and stuff like that. So, exciting times. And then we'll figure out what happens after Gintama. I never actually thought about what we do after Gintama. <laughs> I know, right? It's like... Uh... We've never even considered not having Gintama. Yeah, I know. We've just assumed that Gintama would always going to be there. <laughs> it's going to be weird when we don't have Gintama anymore. But yeah, that's all stuff to look forward to. As the ending episode bit, as always, you can go to Zen's channel where you can feature more Zen-like content. Zen, what's on the Zen plate currently? Uh, of course, we always have Shonen and Chill, and then I'm, I'm deciding whether it's going to still be the same channel or a secondary channel where we get into Phantom Parade and also some Honkai Star Rail stuff. Ooh, smart. It's actually a very, it's very time consuming because you have to do two separate channels, but it's actually a, what I hear, it's better for you to yeah, do I'm two channels. Yeah, I'm told it's better for the algo to do it that yeah, way, one... so I don't know. I, I suck at the algorithm. Like, I'm terrible at it. Yeah. Not that I try that hard, but I'm, I'm very bad at it. No, we both um... are. This is why we work so well together, because we both understand that the algorithm is something that is important to YouTube, and we have both decided to ignore it. Um... Yeah, it's like <laughs> the most important thing, and we're both like, I just won't. Yeah, I just won't. And, I will not, uh, I think. Yeah. We both come from old days where just like a, a, a YouTuber had a single channel and it had just a weird variety. And sometimes you watched everything and sometimes you just pick and choose and we were just okay with it. Like It's really weird to be like, we're old. We're this old. We're like, YouTube is now old. <laughs> we're old minded. We're dinosaurs now, Zen. Internet dinosaurs. How does that feel? I knew it was true. <laughs> 
And speaking of, uh, so yeah, you can go to Zen for that. Uh, if whenever you do decide to, if you do decide to make that second channel, tell me and I will put it up there. Um, if you want all featuring stuff featuring Wokey, there's only one channel for that, and it's right here. If you want Fago videos, I got you covered. The algorithm knows where to feed it for these people. They guide it, they get it, they find it. Shown in not shown it in chill. I don't have that on here, but I do have shown an archive, <laughs> which is. <laughs> You could have that on there. Eventually, me and Zen are going to have to get back together and uh, record some more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff because I'm still thinking about uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Forbidden Memories. God, that game's so good. It is. Um, I, I feel like we probably should do it over so you can actually experience the beginning of it. But uh, Maybe at that point, yeah. it, it would better to be a, a stream of starting. I don't know. I think we're doing pretty good right where we are, Zen. Maybe I'll grind we it are, off. But there's like experience i'm not i'm not talking about like oh you can get more cards i just mean like you're not seeing the events uh fair enough but what do you mean robotic taya <laughs> we have robotic taya oh, no, to... there's a robotic taya in the past too holy shit are you real okay yeah might, there's we... a joey in the past also oh okay we might have to go back there then okay we'll figure it out <laughs> well our episode five will be we restarted the game <laughs> yeah i mean there's literally like a map that you traverse in the beginning there's a map in that game? Yeah. I don't because, have a map. Okay, so, because you picked Stay and Listen, right? Yeah, again, I chose um, to listen to my elders. Big mistake. Yeah. But I, I think if you if you pick to run away, you, like, escape out to the city, and you can just, like, be in the city and, like, do stuff. That's great. I, I still can't believe how much of that game I skipped. Um, but, yeah, that, that will feature more on the channel. Um... There's a Final Fantasy XIV stream that I'm going to put up there at some point. I kind of really like doing that stream. Maybe we'll figure out more times as I, I keep yeah, playing it off Yeah, that Final Fantasy XIV was fun. Yeah, well maybe, maybe we'll figure out a way to put it back and on. And now we can make videos where we play Triple Triad against each other like we always do with card games. It's true, we can now. As soon as I get more cards. <laughs> as soon as we finish our journey of beating all of Triple Triad's members that's currently what i'm mostly focused on i guess also finishing the story uh but i've been having a whole bunch of fun with final fantasy 14 so that's all stuff coming to the channel occasionally i'll remember to put up a random game i recently i was so sad so obviously i was crazy busy with work so when i do that i look for games to play so i can just have for anyone to be like hey at least there's a video going up go check it out if you want and one of the ones whenever i do that i go and find a hello kitty game because hello kitty obviously uh one of the, uh, the icons of our generation not our generation because she came out like actually 50 years before we were born <laughs> but <Yeah>. still <laughs> she was an icon that was there during our generation <laughs> um Did you know there's for some reason uh like a big thing about making hello kitty and stukina merch really yeah it, it, i think it's a fan that does it but it was on twitter a while ago it was like yeah, it was, it's hello kitty and stukina and they also have necklaces of of them it's like shirts and necklaces that's pretty good hello I'm, kitty x sukuna i mean there are hello kitty and godzilla so why not the king of curses <laughs> yeah right. oh is it is it real it might What's be real check rico company san rio yeah that's who makes it that's who that oh, is the... oh hang on i'm sending you this shit san rio really san rio does a lot of crazy shit that you probably would not realize oh that's all awesome like, and Tsukuna has Hello Kitty's little ribbon on his arm. That's amazing. And, it's... and yeah, someone put it on a shirt, and they also put it on uh, necklaces. Yeah, all these... Also... <laughs> it's really funny that they found the one Sanrio character who was actually has Salmon, Salmon Row with him <laughs> for Inumaki. Yeah. That's really good. That's that. These are good pairings. I love. It. Oh, and they even picked cinnamon roll. Cinnamon roll has actually won more um, popularity polls than Hello Kitty. Really? In the Sanrio, yeah. It's Which Cassandra, one is that? Um, the one with Gojo. Oh, okay, that makes the, sense. That one, yeah. Um, Sanrio always does these at the end of the year. They do a popularity poll to see who is the most popular Sanrio character for that year, and I believe Hello Kitty has only ever won the year end vote twice if i remember correctly um usually usually they introduce a new sanrio character and that becomes a new number one for a very long time <laughs> so hello kitty does not usually win every single year you'd think it's like oh yeah it's hello kitty she wins every one but no 
to the Sanrio fans, she is not always the number one <laughs> strongest Hello Kitty character, which is funny. But yeah, I ended up finding out that there was they made a Pokemon Hello Kitty where it's oh. on the Game Boy, and I was like, holy shit, it is literally just you time travel back in the past and you catch a Pokemon type creatures who are in the Sanrio style. And I was like, oh, That's I should cool. I play. Like that. Yeah, I was like, I should play this. But unfortunately, it was never brought over here. And the people who were trying to translate it, they only got about five minutes of it worth done into it. And I was like, damn it. If this ever, <laughs> if I really wished that more people had known about this game because I thought this was actually kind of cool. Because it was during that period where there was like a lot of uh, Pokemon type games released on the Game Boy. And whenever I find them, I always like try and play them because they're like, artifacts of that specific time of every it was like that that brief period of time where when pokemon released up until gold and silver where everyone was trying to make a pokemon game and releasing two of them <laughs> at the same time as well because that's the way pokemon did it so it could be used with like the trade cable and stuff so that's rad it is it is very cool hopefully one day Man, someone... i kind of want this suit kind of hello kitty shirt i would say get it i think you could rock pretty it. pretty banger <laughs> Definitely, Rocket. I'm going to look more into this a little bit later. But yeah, you can feature all that stuff on my channel. And that is it for Shonen Archive Gin Thomas Style. If you want to know how you can support the show, you can literally just keep watching it. If you want to try and help us out in the algorithm, it's always good to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That helps out the channel a whole bunch. Um, but as I say every single time, this channel is mainly supported by Fago. And it's thanks to Fago users that tell me about how I'm making bad decisions talking about specific units that make shows like this possible, everyone. <laughs> I get to deal with, even though all those people are very nice to me and I enjoy talking to them. Uh, that's what supports this channel right here. And it's all good. It's all fun stuff. But yeah, that's the end, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next week, hopefully. Zen, say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out! <laughs>